Welcome to the Core Dictionary. As implied in the name, this video is going to be just an extensive list of open chords for you to play and for you to um, reference. So rather than trying to memorize every single chord that I show in this video, I would use this as a reference point to come back to. If you forget a chord, you can come right to this video. I'll leave timestamps in the description and you can just click on something and get to whatever chord you need to play. Okay, with that being said, we're going to get into some tips and tricks on how to play these chords, maybe even some things to help you remember them better. So the first ones we're going to start out with are the open chords in the C family. So we'll start with a C major chord, which sounds like this. Okay, so that's our C major chord. Um, we're going to start with our third finger on the third fret of the fifth string. Second finger on the second fret, fourth string, and first finger on the second string. So, tip to play this make sure your fingers are curled, because if they're not curled, you're gonna find it very difficult to hear all the, all the um, different strings ringing out. So, try to curl your fingers, that'll help you. Another thing is if your hands are really big, you might find it uncomfortable to play like this. Vice versa, if your hands are small, you might find it difficult to play the chord like this. So if you do play it like this though, this is a good way to mute the bottom string. If you have to play it like this because your hands are too small or you find this more comfortable, then you just have to be careful not to hit the low E string because we don't hit that in this chord. So this is what it looks like. tip I'll give is you can actually use this finger to mute that. Notice how I'm using that. The pad of my finger up here is stopping this string from ringing out. So if you have to play it like this, you can play it. Just mute it with that. Right? So that's your C major chord. Personally, I like playing it this way. It feels more comfortable. Okay. Next, we're going to get into the C7 chord. So the C7 chord is just like the C major chord. Third finger, third fret, fifth string, second finger, second fret, fourth string, first finger, first fret, second string. Only we're going to take the pinky and put that right underneath on the same third fret as our third finger is. We're going to put that right down on the third string. So notice, it's a C, a C chord, only with our pinky right there. So that's adding the seventh note. So this is a C7. Right? So C, C7. So let's get into another one. This one is the C diminished chord. This chord is going to be useful with things that sound a little more soulful, this is what it sounds like. Right? So this is exactly the same as the C major, with one key difference, and that's that we remove the first finger. So it's third finger, third fret, uh, fifth string, second finger, second fret, fourth string, and then the rest of it is just open. Again, none of these chords were playing the 6th string, it's just starting from the 5th. I personally use this chord a lot. Okay, next chord we're going to get to is probably the most important C chord that you will learn, and that is the C add 9. It sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. Basically, anywhere you use a C major, you can use this chord. It sounds like this. notice in a lot of like Christian music you'll hear this chord um, this is really really good for creating more open sounds um, personally I use it just a lot so how we play this is uh, second finger third fret first finger second fret on the fourth string and then we're gonna take the third finger put that on the third fret 
on the second string right there. So this is kind of like a G shape. And then finally, the fourth finger on the, on the third fret, first string. Again, like the other chords, you can play this with your thumb tucked over, or you can play it with the thumb on the back and try to mute it with the tip of this finger. So something very interesting about this chord is it's super easy to switch this from, uh, from the C add 9 to a G. All you have to do is pick up these two fingers and move them down one string. So... And you'll see people do this a lot um, when they're strumming heavy on an acoustic guitar. It's really easy, sounds good. That's my tip for remembering it. Okay, next we're gonna move into the D family of chords. Of course, we'll start out with an open D. Okay, so for this chord, note that we're not playing the sixth string or the fifth string. We'll either cover those with the thumb, or if you don't do that, you just have to be careful not to play it. So the most easy way to remember this is it's a triangle shape. So we got the first finger, second fret, third string, third finger, third fret, second string, and then finally drop the second finger on the second fret of the first string. Again, remember it's like this triangle shape. That's how I always remember the D major chord. Again, top tip, make sure you keep your fingers curled with this one because it's really easy to mute that last note. Also, if you haven't cut your nails, you probably should cut your nails before you try to play this chord. It's very difficult to play it with super long nails. One final tip I'll give you is if you're playing this with a lot of gain, um, you can actually play, you can play that A because that A string, the fifth string, you can play it because it's technically part of the chord. It's a note in the chord, so you can play it in there, but it's going to take focus away from it, and it's going to give it a more heavy sound. So that's with it. And this is without it. So it depends what you're going for. If you're going for a more focused and clear sound, you might want to use just the regular D. But if you're going for a more heavy sound, you might want to include that fifth string. Personally, this is where I would use a lot of gain and then just... Okay, next chord we'll get into is a D minor chord. It looks a little bit different from the D, but it actually is pretty similar. Here's what it sounds like. Right, so that's your D minor chord. Um, we're gonna start with the second finger placed on the second fret of the third string. It's so right there. Then we're gonna take the third finger, put it on the third fret of the second string. So just a step under it. And then finally, we're gonna take the first string, first fret, first finger. <laughs> Right, so that's your D minor chord. Something I will note is that really this is just the D major chord with this last note shifted down one. But we play it very differently because for our finger's sake, it's very difficult to stretch that back there and you know, do that. So we play it like this. Moving on, we have the D seventh chord. It sounds like this. This, we're going to start with the 2nd finger, 2nd fret, 3rd string. We're going to have the 1st finger, 1st fret of the 2nd string, so just a step below it. And then take the 3rd finger, put it on the 2nd fret of the 1st string.
So I'll note that actually this is the same as the D major chord, only this note is moved down a whole step, so two frets. So we're moving this down two steps. Right, so this is your D7th chord. To remember it, it's kind of like a reverse triangle. See that? Next, we'll move on to the D2 chord. This is exactly the same as a D major chord, only without one finger. This is what it sounds like. Okay, so we're going to have the first finger, put it on the second fret of the third string, take the third finger, just a step below it, right here on the third fret of the second string. And then we're gonna let that first string just ring out. So something I'll note about this is I actually like playing the A, uh, this fifth string, with it because it makes it sound a little bigger. Specifically, this one is one of my go-to game chords. So finally, in our family of D chords, we have the D diminished chord. Take the first finger and bar all three of these. So that's on the second fret, we're going to bar the third string, second string, and first string. Note that this is the same as a regular D major, only we're flatting this note down one. So for that reason, it sounds really good if we slide it into the D major chord. So the next one we can learn is the D suspended, which all we have to do is we'll play our regular D chord, that regular triangle shape, still not playing those two notes, and then we just drop the pinky down right there, right under th this finger, so that we get this sound. Next, we're going to get into the E family of chords. Starting out, we'll have an E major chord. Sounds like this. Now, this is one of my favorite chords of all. It just has such a powerful and majestic sound. We'll start with the second finger on the second fret of the fifth string. Next, right underneath it, we're going to have on the second fret the third finger on the fourth string. So right underneath it there. Next, we're going to have the first finger, put it down, step to the side on the first, first fret of the third string. So first finger, first fret, third string. And the rest of the strings are going to ring out. For this chord, all of the strings will be played. <laughs> So next we'll have the E minor chord. Sounds like this. Now note that the E minor chord is just the same as the E major chord, but we remove one finger. So that would mean we have our second finger on the second fret of the fifth string, our third finger on the second fret of the fourth string right underneath it, and then the rest of the strings just ring out. next chord we're going to cover is going to be the E minor 7th. All we have to do to play the E minor 7th, all we have to do is drop one finger. So from our E minor, which is this, we drop that finger. So it's just the second finger 
on the second fret, fifth string. So it sounds like this. So this is one of the easiest chords, it's just one fretted note. All the strings ring. So next, and finally, we're going to have the E7. It sounds like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the second finger on the second fret of the fifth string, and then we're going to just skip right to the first finger and put that on the first fret on the third string. All the rest of the strings are going to ring out. So it's just these two fingers. So this is exactly the same as an E major chord, only taking one finger away. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to the F chords. The first chord we're going to have is an F major chord. It's going to sound like this. Okay, so we're going to have the third finger on the fourth string, third fret. We're going to have the second finger on the second fret on the third string. Can I have the first finger on the first fret, second string? So the way I like to think of this is like they're each stepping down one string and one fret. So it's stepping down, this one is stepping down one fret from here, this one's stepping down one fret from here, and one string. And finally, uh, note that this last one is barred. So we're gonna hold down that so that we can hold down both of the notes on the first and second string. Again, you want to be really careful with your curling of your fingers. And we do not play the fifth string or the sixth string. Alright, so that was our F major. Next we have F diminished. F diminished is the same as F major, only we lift our finger up. This is what it sounds like. One of my absolute favorite chords. All we have to do is take the third finger, put it on the third fret, fourth string, second finger on the second fret, third string, first finger, first fret, second string. So again, we have this stepping pattern where it's down, down, like that. Only we're not barring that, that last note on the first fret. We're just gonna let that ring out. sound. So next we're going to move into the G family. First we'll start with the G major, or this is what it sounds like. Note that this can also be played another way, I'm going to get into that later. The second finger is going to go on the third fret of the sixth string. First finger is going to go on the second fret of the fifth string. Third finger is going to go on the third fret of the second string. And first finger is going to go on the third fret of the first string. So we have this step here, and then these last two fingers are just holding, holding it down here on the third fret. a rich sounding chord. Okay, so I'm gonna move into a different version of G. Um, some people might prefer the sound. So this is the same as the other one. We're gonna have um, second finger on the third fret of the sixth string, first finger on the second fret of the fifth string, and then we're gonna take the third finger and just do the third fret on the first string. So all the rest are gonna ring out.
So as a comparison, here's this one. And here's the earlier one. The difference is technically between a third and a fifth, but you don't need to worry about that. Next, we have what I call rock G. So this one I use when I need a lot of gain and it needs to just cut through. It sounds like this. So the only difference with this and the other normal G chord is that I've taken this finger off and I'm now muting this string with the pad of this second finger. So I'm gonna have the second finger on the third fret of the sixth string. I'm gonna mute the fifth string with it. So I'm gonna have the third finger on the third fret of the second string, fourth finger on the third fret of the first string. Okay? Next we're gonna move into the G7 chord. So we have our third finger on the third fret of the sixth string, second finger on the second fret of the fifth string. We're gonna let all these strings ring out, and then we're gonna have our first finger on the first fret of the first string. stepped like the third uh, like the C chord so we have this down to this and then this one's gonna drop way down there all the way to the first fret next we're going to move into the a family of chords we're gonna have a major note that there are two ways to play this I'm gonna show you both of them the way that I play it most normally is I just take the first finger and bar it across the front it sounds like this So I just take my first finger, I don't play the sixth string, I play the fifth, I put my first finger on the second fret of the fourth string, and I just drop it down to bar all these. However, I'm careful that I don't play this last first string. I don't play that at all. So you don't hear that. I'm actually muting that with this hand. Takes a little bit of skill to play it this way, but it's very easy to play it this way. So I play it this way a lot. Now, the beginner way to play it, which is more beginner friendly and has a different voicing, is to use three fingers. Take your second finger, put it on the second fret of the fourth string. Third finger, put it on the second fret of the third string. Fourth finger, second fret, second string. Now note that they're all on the same fret. We're just stacking them up over each other and we're gonna let this last note ring out. Again, we're not playing the sixth string. So this is probably more beginner friendly. Some people will have you play it with these fingers but I recommend play it with these fingers because when we get to bar chords, it's gonna make a little bit more sense. Right, so that's your A major. Next, I'll show you an A minor. So that's what that sounds like. We have the second finger on the second fret of the fourth string, third finger on the second fret of the third string, so right underneath it, and then first finger on the first fret of the second string, so, and then the last string is gonna ring out. Okay, next I'm gonna show you an A minor seven. This is exactly the same as an A minor, but with one finger removed. Just take the second finger, put it on the second fret of the fourth string, take the first finger, put
put it on the first fret of the second string. Everything else rings out except for this uh, sixth string. Next, we're going to have an A suspended chord. Like the A major chord, there are two ways to play this. I'm going to show you the beginner friendly way first. It sounds like this. So we're going to take the second finger, put it on the second fret of the fourth string. Going to take the third finger, put it on the second fret of the third string, and then Rather than putting it, uh, the fourth finger here, like for an A major chord, I'm just going to bump it up one so that the fourth finger sits on the third fret of the second string. And then the last string, you can get it, you can ring it, let it ring out. However, if you can't make it ring out, don't worry, I play it a lot of the time without that last note. Actually, I almost never play it this way. A better way to play it, in my opinion, is this way. So, the way I play that is I take the first finger, fourth string, second fret, and I'll bar it across. So that's our A major chord, right? And then what I do is I just take my third finger and put it on the third fret of the second string right there. play the last string. So the reason I like this is I can go so I can do things like that. Next we're going to get into the A2 chord. So this is the same as an A chord only we're going to take the pinky off. Right? So we got the second finger on the 2nd fret of the 4th string. Next we have the 3rd finger on the 2nd fret of the 3rd string, just below the other finger. So we're gonna let, we're gonna play that and we're not going to play the 6th string as always. Next, we're going to learn the A diminished chord. So it's going to sound like this. So this chord, we take the second finger, put it on the second fret of the fourth string, first finger, first fret of the third string, so just a step below it, and then finally we're going to take the third finger and put it here on the 2nd fret of the 2nd string. So it kind of looks like um, the D7 chord if you remember it. Just moved down one. Also, if it's easier for you to remember, it's the same as the A major chord, just with that there, and that lifted up. You can also play it with your pinky playing that note. For the last A chord, I'm going to show you the A 7th chord, and I'm going to show you two different versions of it. We have the A 7th like this, and the A 7th like this. So to play the first one, we're going to do the bar like we did for the A. So we take the first finger, put it on the second fret, of the 4th string, bar all the way across, still not playing that 6th string, and then we'll just take this 3rd uh, finger, or 2nd finger, whichever is more comfortable, and place it on the 3rd fret of the 1st string. Right? So then the other way to play it is take your A chord, so that would be like this, and then just take one finger out. So you would take your first, second finger, put it on the second fret, um, fourth string, take your pinky, 
put that on the second fret as well, on the second string, and then let that middle string ring out. Right? So that's your other A7 chord. Personally, I use this one a lot. But you can also do this. It depends on what sound you're going for. So for the final chord in, the, uh, in our open chords, we're going to learn the only open B chord. This is the B7. Sounds like this. So this is actually one of the more complex um, open chords. We're going to take the second finger, put it on the second fret of the fifth string. It's right there. We're going to put right underneath it on the lower fret. We're going to put first finger, first fret, fourth string. Next, we're going to take our third finger, put it there on the third string, second fret. So we're making a triangle here. And then finally, we're going to take the pinky and put that on the first string, second fret. So the way I kind of think about this is I have a triangle here and then I have a pinky added. Uh, also, we are not playing the sixth string, just the fifth string down. Okay, so this is going to be one of the most helpful chords when you're playing a lot of blues. That about concludes it for this video. Um, like I said, I'll include timestamps, so feel free to skip around the video, look for the chord that you want. And um, with that, hope you got something out of it, and uh, yeah.